Holmes. I am indeed a PhD student studying quantum dynamics, and I love talking about quantum mechanics so much, and I'm so happy you're all here for me to share this. So today I'm going to be talking about quantum billiards, which is as literal as it sounds. It's not an analogy. This is something I actually look at in my research. And also, so I'll be looking at classical billiards, so the kind of billiards we can expect to play in clubs, or at least a variation of that, alongside quantum billiards. At the end, I'll tell you which piece of technology you might have in your homes that uses this idea. So, I learned something new recently, billiards. So, in this model, I was always thinking, why is it called billiards? Because the billiards that I'm used to in, in pubs is pool. Because it's many balls bouncing around a table, there's po like pockets on the table, and it might fall in the pockets. But the billiards I look at is just a ball on a table, no holes, just bouncing around. A little bit more boring, and in that case, why is it called billiards? So, English billiards, pool, is actually based on French billiards called Carmon billiards, which is all about a couple of balls on a table and you're making trick shots. There's no pockets on there. So if you walk away with one piece of knowledge today, know that English billiards is actually based on French billiards. But the billiards we'll look at is a variation on Carmon billiards to one extra degree. We like to make things simple in physics, and with that, that's one reason why we're having no holes, but also we'll make it easy by having like only one ball on the table. How does that one ball move around? We're going to say that in the ball will only move in straight lines, so no trick shots, please. And the ball, the table has no friction, so the ball can keep on moving forever and ever and ever until we stop it or until the heat gets in the universe. And the last thing, and this is my favorite thing. The table can be of any size. No longer do we just have to play on rectangular billiard tables. We can play on circles, we can play on heart shapes, we can play on a table that's the shape of Milton Keynes, we can play on anything. <laughs> so, bear that in mind. When I say billiards, this is what we're playing. So, classical billiards is exactly that. It's the billiards we expect. A ball bounces around the table, hits the side, and reflects back, and then you just have a motion of the ball moving. So this isn't the best video because the ball is quite hard to see. I'll show you another one in a second. But if you can see that, that's the kind of billy we're expecting. Just the ball bouncing around. So that's classical billiards. Just the ball. Classical billiards is interesting because there's a couple of different types of motion a billy can take. It can be periodic, the motion repeats, or it can be chaotic. It looks a bit messy, and I'll explain why in a minute. Period of motion can look like this. So this is another billiard. And if I let it just go for a while, and let it just keep bouncing around. Fun fact, I made this animation about five years ago. I wouldn't say it any better. And now it's repeating. So periodic motion has this. And circles and ovals and ellipses all have periodic motion. Great. What does chaotic motion look like? So chaotic motion of a billiard very much depends on the shape of the table. A lot of tables have like unusual like warped shapes and then your motion will not repeat. So this is the best time to tell you all that this is a moose. <laughs> Some facts about moose is that uh, they are the largest member of the deer family. You can find them in Canada and Poland. And if you were to make a billiard table in the shape of a moose and hit a ball around that table, the motion is chaotic. You'll see that this motion will start looking a bit more messy over time. But chaotic motion just means that if you were to hit a ball in like two balls in very similar directions, at very similar angles, but they had the tiniest difference in the angle, the motion will be completely different. And we have one billy ball here, but I like to just think of chaos as looking a bit messy. At some time, the billy and moose will look like this. So, this is classical billiards. But we're not here for classical billiards. We all know what those are because, again, we've been to a pub before, probably, at least this one. And I'm here for quantum billiards. 
So before we go into quantum theory, it's nice to ask ourselves, and why put together, what is a quantum particle? I figured the best way to explore this together is break down the words. First off, what do we mean by particle? A particle is just an object. In this context, a particle is at the size of an atom or smaller. Particles have several different um, attributes and features, um, but I'll come to that in a second. What's the second word? Quantum. The really scary word that we see in pop science. Quantum literally just means amount. Which I'm quite glad it's called quantum because saying quantum mechanics is cool. Saying amount of mechanics would be a bit weird. But it just means amount. So particles have an amount of something. What do they have an amount of? They have an amount of energy. The plural of quantum is actually quanta. Particles can have an amount of energy in like fixed amounts. It can have like very it can have the lowest energy you can have, and then it can have one quantum of energy more and then one quantum of energy more, and keep going and keep going as it gets more energy. But it can't have like, for example, half of quantum of energy. That doesn't really work with particles. So we look at particles at these stages of energy. So quantum particle has that. The last thing I'll mention about quantum particles is my favorite feature of them. It's that particles act like waves. You hear this often in, in quantum mechanics stuff, that they act like waves. And that's really quite unusual, because we're used to objects, like balls, moving in a straight line. They don't act like waves, they stay a ball the entire time. But particles are different. So, I'm gonna grab a pot really quickly, whilst also trying to keep hold of the presentation stick. In my hand, I have a little whale. Now, I look at you, we are talking about two different physics today. We're talking about the physics we experience every single day and the physics particles experience. In the physics we experience every single day, I have a whale. I can move the whale, I can throw the whale, I can, any, at any point we can say, that's where the whale is, that's where the whale's gone, that's how fast the whale's going. We will always know where this whale is. But if this whale was a quantum particle, I'd move it and essentially lose it. It would be somewhere in this pub, but we don't know exactly where. Quantum particles spread out as waves. And what I mean by that is their motion can be described as if it's a wave. Think like how a water wave can ripple in a pool and then bounce off the side and stay in the area. So looking at this wave tells us where the particle could be. Where the wave touches is where the particle could be. And also by looking at this wave, you can also find out where it's more likely to be. If I started to move my particle in that direction, it's more likely to be at the other side of the room than it is to be behind me. So quantum particles, whenever you, we look at them, we look at them as waves, we look at particle waves. So I'm gonna put my whale down. So we're gonna look at quantum billiards by looking at their particle waves. So in billiards, as we've discussed already, there's one way that we tend to look at classical billiards, and that's how the ball bounces on the table. But quantum mechanics is a bit more interesting. There's actually two ways we can look at quantum billiards. The first is looking at photos of a particle wave at different energies, different energy cells, at different quanta of energy. If I can do this properly, yep, said that. That's what I just said. And the second is, what if we ask the particle to have a low energy? We, we construct the particle wave, we choose what it's going to be, and then we put on a bigger billiard and we let it bounce around. What does it look like then? And that's quite similar to classical billiards as we get to look at how it bounces and that's dynamics. So we'll go through the first one. How the particle wave in a billiard builds it at different energies. This is a phrase that um, many academics might hate, which is particles with more energy have wiggly waves. Basically that means waves with more energy have higher frequency. The bottom wave here has the lowest frequency, and then the top wave has the highest. This is similar to the color spectrum, in terms of this is why this is red and indigo. Color 
has different wavelengths. But each wave here is depicting a new like level of energy. So this is the lowest energy, first lowest, next lowest, one after. Um, we have terminology in quantum mechanics which says the lowest energy we call the ground state because it's all the way on the ground. The one after that is the first excited state because it's excited, it has a quantum of energy. The one after that is the second excited state and the third is the third excited state and you just keep on going. So what do these look like on a noise table? Here I've got our oval and we'll go through these one by one. So the lowest energy one, this one with a long wave, basically so long that by the time it goes up and hits the edge of the billiard, it has enough time to go down like a normal wave. It just fills the whole thing. The yellow is representing when the wave goes up. The first excited state has enough time for it to go down and then up. So the red is when it goes down, yellow is when it goes up. The next is very similar, but instead it's going in the opposite direction, but it's still going down and then up. And the next one is at a higher frequency and the wave is shorter, so it's time to go up and then down and then up and then down. So these are all quantum billiards at different energy levels. Okay, great. So we now know what particle waves look like on an air ball. That's really cool, but like, we can choose our billiard shape. So once again, I tell you that this is a moose. <laughs> and if you put a quantum particle on a moose-shaped billiard, you can see how it fills it. So let's look at the lowest energy. At the ground state, it fills the torso. Fantastic. I'm going to show the fourth excited state next. Take an image in your mind what that could look like. And we'll see how close you are. There you go. We've reached the leg. It goes up and then down and then up. So the yellow is when it goes, the pep, that's pink. The pink is when it goes down, the blue is when it goes up. Okay, we'll show you the eighth and let's see how far into the moose we get. Quite far, even down the other leg. Down and then up and then down. And if you do this for quite a few energy, you, you go to a high energy uh, particle wave, you get something that looks like this. And this is really pretty. <laughs> and if you keep on going, you're getting them prettier. Um, it's a bit like a mosaic. It's the pink and the yellow. Is, I say keep them yellow. The pink and the blue are just ripples on the moose. But this is the first way we can look at the quantum billiards. So, the second way, the one with dynamics, the one that reminds us of how it is to play classical billiards, how it moves, is all about, we get to choose our billiard. We get to choose our like, particle wave and then put that on a big billiard. So for simplicity, we're going to pick the ground state, the lowest energy billiard. So so that looks like this, and we're going to specific, we're gonna ask the particle wave to stay positive. So take the absolute value of it. So it just stays up. So instead of wiggling, it just stays up. And we have a choice to also stay a circle or spread out, depends on what we fancy. We can ask it to stay a circle until it hits the wall of the billiard. So we're going to put it on a larger billiard. So we've got this low circle here, and that's what we're going to shoot into the billiard table. So, so we're going to play this twice. But it hits the wall, you can see a slight ripple in there, it keeps on going, you can see some more ripples because again it's still a wave and it spreads out and fills the billion. The interesting thing with looking at just the positive value of the wave, the absolute value, is it tells us where the particle's most likely to be. The higher, there we go, the brighter the spots on the billiard table is where the particle is most likely. Because the wave function tells us where it could be, whilst the absolute value tells us the probability of it. It's dark over here, it's not likely to be over there. Until it gets bright, now it's likely to be over here. So that's our quantum billion bouncing around a table. Okay, fantastic. Well, I've got one more video to show, which is my personal favorite, because I love dynamics.
things. And the fact that this exists makes me very happy. So for the last time tonight, I tell you, this is a moose. <laughs> and if you put a particle wave on a moose-shaped billion, and you also just let it spread out as it moves before it hits all, so we can fill the moose a bit quicker, it looks like this. So again, we're choosing to let it spread out a little bit, just so it fills that moose. And it fills it, and so you'll be able to see the head, it's coming up. Uh, this is again, what we're saying about probabilities, the wall is more likely to be over here than over there. And then again, the head. And if you let this go for some time, the moose starts looking like this. This. <laughs> Not that. Uh, That's what? a summary slide. I don't think the video is working, so imagine a very colourful, vibrant moose. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's stunning, and you'll tell your children about it. So summarise, also imagine it over there. <laughs> so, to summarise, we've looked at three different ways of looking at billiards. We've looked at classical billiards in a moose. What we expect to see in a pub, like every Canadian pub. We've seen quantum particle waves, different energies fill a moose. And we've seen a particle wave, I mean, you can see the particle wave as it bounces on the moose, fill the moose. This is what we mean by quantum billiards. And just to wrap up, applications. So classical billiards has obvious applications of fun and games, actually playing billiards, we all love that. And, but really my favorite application of classical billiards comes from my childhood. And that is, the, that is, imagine a DVD menu screen. <laughs> and it bounces around the screen because I think there's an error in the panel point. <laughs> but what you'd expect from the DVD menu screen is if you remember it bouncing around, that is literally a classical billiard on a rectangular table. Um, I don't know about you, but I always got the satisfaction when I hit the corner. So again, imagine that. Fantastic. Best presentation. <laughs> and it's still it's still yellow. Oh, we got a new slide. No, we did not. <laughs> That's quite all right. The bank is on that. I can see it from the slide. <laughs> but the, I'll keep the title slide up there. Yeah. The other application is what we call quantum dots. So quantum billiards is realized in what we call quantum dots. So it's all about taking an atom, something that can like, retrieve energy, absorb energy, and emit it, and encasing it in some kind of um, shell. By doing this, you can just pluck the energy, and give it out, and you can take these little like objects and pop them onto microchips. From there, you can make new technologies from it, stuff that has properties that use quantum mechanics to its fullest. My, I have two examples and they're my favorite. So the example of what piece of technology you might have in your home, well, the answer to that is a quantum LED TV. They've been around for I think about six years. Um, they often called QLED TVs. I believe LG makes them. And essentially they've used quantum dots of different sizes to trap uh, particle waves of different frequencies. So larger ones can trap red, red light, and then small ones can go for more like indigo. Basically, you get a fuller, more vibrant color spectrum than your typical LED TVs. And then, the other one is quantum dot solar panels, where it's all about absorbing the energy from the sun and then emitting it back into a power bank. So this really is not an analogy. Quantum is, is a great simulation to what we can expect the wavelengths and particle waves to fill up these little quantum dots and then get used into really cool technologies. So with that, I'd like to give my thank yous when I they show up. There you go, right? Yeah, there we go. To my research group, uh, members present and past who have all enriched my understanding of quantum millions, as well as Alexander Gustafsson, who has given me many of the videos we have seen in this presentation, and Sylvia Vidal, Cynthia Vidal, sorry, who has did give me a photo of quantum dots. But imagine that. She's still gonna thank you. Um, with that, I have a 
if you follow that, there's also a feedback form and all my social media contacts. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, what went well, what could be better. I will always appreciate it. Thank you so much.